At the end of this Med Mastery lesson, you will be able to recognize and classify abnormalities in the interatrial septum, such as a secundum or primum atrial septal defect and a patent foramen ovale. First things first. Many physicians may be confused by an apical four-chamber image that looks like this. An echocardiogram of the right atrium with a dark area in the interatrial septum. Is that a defect? The first thing you should do is to look at the right heart and ask yourself, is it a normal size? If there were a natural septal defect, the right heart would very likely be enlarged, as we can see in the heart on the right. So, here we can see that the right heart is a normal size. Instead, this dark area in the interatrial septum is actually due to ultrasound dropout. This occurs when the ultrasound beam is parallel to the septum. As a result, the returning signal is weak, if it appears at all. But this is okay. Dropout occurs with all equipment, even when it is brand new. In this case, the ultrasound beam is parallel to the septum. And in this particular spot, the septum is so thin that it barely reflects any ultrasound back to the transducer. You may have guessed this is actually the fossa ovalis, and it is completely normal. But what happens when you do suspect a septal defect? In this case, you must use a collar box to assess the direction of the blood flow. In addition, if your cursor is perpendicular to the potential defect, you should also use pulse wave Doppler to measure the velocity of blood flow and confirm your suspicions. Use all views where you can see the interatrial septum, that is, the parasternal short axis of the valves, apical four chamber and subcostal views. To better understand septal defects, let's take a look at how the interatrial septum is formed. The interatrial septum is actually made up of two thinner membranes. The septum secundum on the right atrial side here in blue and the septum primum on the left atrial side here in red. You will notice they are both incomplete and each has a hole but these holes are offset and covered by the opposing septum, together creating a continuous wall. This area is called a fossa ovalis. When flow occurs between the two atria, from the right atrium to the left atrium, the hole is referred to as a foramen ovale. This is a normal structure in the fetal heart, but it should close over after birth. A secundum atrial septal defect is characterized by an interatrial septum only made up of the septum primum, the septum on the left atrium side. As a result, there will be a shunt in the middle of the interatrial septum. The blood flow moves from left to right as the pressure in the left atrium is higher than in the right atrium. Conversely, a primum atrial septal defect is characterized by an interatrial septum only made up of the septum secundum, the septum on the right atrium side. Although both septa exist in the fetal heart, the septum primum recedes excessively in patients with this type of septal defect. This leaves a gap in the lower interatrial septum Again, the blood flow moves from the left atrium to the right atrium. And lastly, a patent foramen ovale, or PFO. Remember, the foramen ovale is a normal structure in the fetal heart, and it is essential to fetal circulation. However, if the foramen ovale does not close fully after birth, it may allow blood to flow from the right atrium into the left atrium when the right atrial pressures exceed the left. 
Well done. You can now recognize and distinguish between ultrasound dropout, an arterial septal defect, and a patent foramen ovale. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.